Hey everyone, our guest today is Dr. Alan Tien with my co-host, Dave Ballenberger. Alan is the President and Chief Science Officer of MD Logics, and we get into talking about what MD Logics is and more about mental health in the business sector. And then we also get into how we make connections in business in the mental health field. So it's a different kind of a show. It seems more like a meeting sometimes, but I think it's a good idea to kind of hear how those things happen and evolve when you're working in this sector of healthcare. So enjoy. I'm not the house of cards that falls down easily. I'm strong enough to handle what you throw at me. Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I'm your host, Kristen Sinanta Walker. Just what are we going to discuss? The intimacy that is mental health. Let's continue to make it as comfortable as discussing brain health or heart health. This show has been on the air for several years, and we have amazing co-hosts. And then we created a network of podcasters on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com, a place where every possible facet of mental well-being can be talked about openly. My show, after several hundred interviews, the format is this, intimate, deep, funny, touching, sometimes uncomfortable, but always vulnerable conversations with interesting people. The goal is to have you, our listening family, many of you who have become my good friends, feel as though you are listening in on private conversations. Thank you for tuning in and becoming part of this amazing journey with me and now with our network of podcasters. Just knowing this podcast might be helping any of you realize you are not alone on this journey called being a human being makes doing this podcast worth every second. After all we promised we be cordial. Dave Ballenberger, thanks so much, of course, for joining me on our mental health business podcast. Well, it's always good to be here, Kristen. <laughs> and Alan, our listeners heard a little bit about you. I'm really excited about MD Logics, but first, I'm so glad I met you and thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, can you tell our listeners, you know, the 411 on what MD Logics is about and why you created it? It's a little tough to do that, but I'll try because I we know. do a lot of different things. <laughs> But um, our main focus is on um, you know, non-research uh, community programs uh, to help with behavioral health integration, uh, including social determinants as sort of the broad range of um, psychosocial factors that are problems for a lot of people. And by behavioral health integration, I mean we're combining on a single cloud uh, you know, data platform or software platform screening and measurement, uh, referral and service coordination, and real-time visual data analytics. Um, and so the core of screening is to make sure that uh, we can do evidence-based, comprehensive assessment of issues that affect people, such as anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, uh, alcohol, and other substance abuse bullying, and many other issues that are unfortunately um, pretty common in our society. But you aren't an electronic health record. We are not an EHR. We are, uh, I think, in many ways, very complementary to EHRs. Uh, our technology is uh, actually based on a clinical research management system, which is why I said uh, non-research is our main focus. So the kind of a cloud data infrastructure or back-end to our BHWorks uh, tools is actually um, full-fledged support for formal clinical research studies and data management. So our platform is, is actually very effective and efficient at enabling people to define what they want to measure, uh, create data collection forms and libraries of items and forms and versioning, and then deploy those into um, you know, non-research settings, such as in schools, emergency departments, primary care clinics, pediatric clinics, um, other places where people really need to screen and then take care of behavioral health and psychosocial problems. So in, in what way is this not competition to pieces of what EHRs do? Well, everything is competition to some extent, <laughs> eventually. Right. But if you, if you want to solve problems today um, and over the you know, near future, then really it's not very much competition. It's really 
uh, complementarity. Right, yeah. right. We were at a conference, and I, you know, I go to so many, and I know you do too. I can't even remember what it was, but we were. I know we. I know where we were. We were in Washington D.C. It wasn't too long ago, and you were trying to explain what MD Logics does to a bunch of doctors, um, clinicians, and um, it was not understandable for some of them, um, for most of them, but I went, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And I know who you should talk to, which is Dave Vallenberger with Next Step Solutions, because I, I got it, but I come from the world of technology. So I would imagine that you showing this to people so they get the visual of it is probably an easier way for someone who doesn't have a tech mind to get, kind of get it. Is that correct? Very much the case. So actually, we met at the um, uh, MedKai meeting in Baltimore, I think. There you was go. It, it sounds south someplace, actually, near D.C. That's right. So, um, yeah, so we do a lot of uh, web demos of VHWorks. And it's, uh, you know, 11 years of software development, lots of feedback uh, from users in, in those various community settings I mentioned. So it's very streamlined, user-friendly. It doesn't take very long for someone to start using it. Uh, but then there's just lots and lots of um, utility or features that we have that people have asked for and we've, we've built. Um, and, Alan, and Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But if I was using your product to uh, create a care plan for someone, um, would it be able to help me with um, social health determinants? Exactly. Yeah. So one of the things we have in the platform is support for creating care plans. Um, and also supporting behavioral health integration. So these are actual CMS kind of reimbursement models. They're a little more complicated mm -hmm. than just, you know, plain mm -hmm. fee for service. So, yeah, the care plan uh, can have any identified problems as part of the care plan. And then you map those identified problems to, the, you know, the intervention, the tasks of, of addressing them. So we start with screening people for behavioral health and social determinants problems. So you might yeah. find out someone has yeah. diabetes, depression, alcohol problems, and mm -hmm. they're homeless. Does it tie back into uh, value-based payment? Yes. Yeah, it does. Okay. So it'd be a way of, because in value-based payment, uh, you're going to be measured on actually demonstrating that someone got better. So as a, uh, what I call health science um, process framework or health science architected cloud data platform which is really focused on measuring things including repeated mm -hmm. measures and outcomes so that's something that bhworks does does well um, and that's the kind of data that people you know more and more need to have um, you know to qualify and document reimbursement models you can see right. why i, yes. I thought about yeah. this you can see why i thought about this dave right based on the conversations we've had like as of yesterday even no, no, this fits into a lot of places. I've been yep. trying to figure out. Um, I've been trying to figure out. Um, are you are you familiar with Next Step at all? Uh, Our product. One, told me uh, not that familiar, but I just I'd say one more thing is you know for the actual uh, CCM, the chronic care management, which is a Medicare reimbursement model or right. you know kind of code. Um, so we you have to document how much time is spent in uh, developing and carrying out the care plan. So we just, you know, we added a timer into the software and okay. it's it able to handle some of the things that happen. People get interrupted, you know, so you can't count the time when you're interrupted. You got to pause it and restart. Right. Right. So we have that component. Um, yeah, I, I learned a bit about Next Step. I'd love to learn more about it, actually. Well, the reason I ask is because um, one of the things I'm working on is that in relationship to value-based payment and just in terms of how care plans are going to be written, uh, they're not going to be written the way they're written right now, which is often based on diagnosis versus functionality and being able to improve a person's function in the community. And if you don't consider things like social determinants of health, you're not, you're not going to be successful at it. That's exactly right. And uh, it's a little bit in the future, I think, for a product. But I'd love to, you know, offline talk to you about using the uh, World Health Organization International Classification of Functioning (ICF). So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a very detailed way of um, defining and coding, uh, you know, impairments and functioning. 
And uh, it's a little complicated, <laughs> but that's where software can really help make these right. things practical. Yeah. Are, are, are you familiar with, um, I don't know if you follow legislation at all, but uh, Debbie Stabenow, who's from Michigan, the senator from Michigan, uh, passed a bill that created certified community uh, behavioral health clinics. And the model that you're describing in terms of how your software works fits right into what she's expecting these places to do. Uh, I, I know actually, yeah, working with, we're working with the CCBH here um, in, in, in Baltimore. Okay. And, and we're configuring, you know, BHWorks for, uh, you know, fairly detailed um, intake and kind of internal referral and, and service request, you know, workflow processing. Um, yeah. Can, can I come and practice. visit, doctor? Yes, please. <laughs> No, I. Um, <laughs> I'll cut if you I, do it in Maryland. I'll join you, Dave. Um, but I know. Well, I, I've been trying, but I've been trying to. I've been trying to. Uh, Kristen, we're getting away from the interview. The, hey, no, um, that's okay. I want people to hear how these things are are born. I mean, we do business here too, in terms of the. I'm never going to be fully out of the EHR world and I'm never going to be fully out of the technology world. And um, so this is, you know, for listeners, this is kind of, this is day in the life of what I do when I'm not podcasting. I'm just turning it into a podcast. <laughs> yeah, because I'd like to come and see. I know truly I would like to come and see what you're doing um, and exactly how you're using your product in terms of um, fitting that in. Now, is the program where you're using it in, in Boston, is that is that a certified community behavioral health clinic? Uh, it's in Baltimore. And oh, Baltimore, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I believe it is. I don't know uh, 100%, but they're right now supported by SAMHSA or, you know, yes. one of these um, yes. things. So, um, and yes. it's part of Zipper Pratt, actually. Um, okay. So I also learned something that was a little bit strange. You know, the state of Pennsylvania you know, has it for these CCBHCs and they um, are uh, struggling financially. And I think they're like refusing federal funds because of the uncertainty of those funds. It's yeah. Really kind of, yeah. So there's it's, a lot of that amazes me. Um, yeah. Because every, everybody yeah. else is spending the federal government's money. Um, yeah. So we and things, you know, actually, after the uh, this uh, half hour is up. I mean, I I just happy to give you a web demo right now if you want, or right following. I can do that. Uh, I would like to do that. Yes, um, I'm supposed to be in something else, but I'll skip it. Um, I'd rather see your web demo because I think there's some things here. See, because there has to be a way to combine what you're doing into a behavioral health model. You know, no matter what it is, the behavioral health model is because things are becoming very data driven and you know decisions are going to be made based on data not a social worker's best guess um cuz one of the things that we're doing too is we're developing artificial intelligence into our software um for measurement plus you know helping to make decisions about what should happen when a patient comes in to see a primary care physician because uh, I think as we go down the road, primary care is going to begin driving behavioral health. And uh, more things are going to start to happen in the doctor's office than they are right now. Absolutely. And, you know, CMS has been um, trying to promote this concept of advanced primary care for quite a while. Yeah. And, is, yeah. and really, there's no, uh, I think, ultimately, any commission um, whether they're a family doc or, you know, internist or a neurologist, wherever, they, they can uh, do more things um, with the support that software can provide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, referrals is, is uh, inefficient. A lot of referrals are lost still in the United States in healthcare. People get upset. But it's a delay. It's more cost. And yeah. it's kind of like fragmenting the knowledge about an individual patient. So I'm totally in favor of what you're you're saying, you know, and that it needs to be uh, over time one more individually precise understanding of a person, their issues and their strength, and then making sure that the problems, you know, are taken care of and tracked and 
And that process, if we do it with scientifically high quality data in, in you know, again, in non-research uh, care settings, then we're gonna be generating a very powerful population database that we can use to understand mm -hmm. more, create new knowledge. That was my original goal when I started Immunologix in um, 1997 after, you know, after 10 years as a, at an academic center. Like I wanna okay. use IT to bring uh, science and practice closer together and eventually make it seamless. There's, there's a lot of work to do still, <laughs> but we're making progress. Well, yeah, no, 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 I think there is a lot of work, but uh, I think this is the way you get it done. Uh, what we're hoping to end up with artificial intelligence is that, or using it, is that like say the doctor comes in, it's obvious someone has a behavioral health issue, that you know, doctors, primary care physicians only have so much time to spend with any one patient and that the system would be capable of giving back to the doctor recommendations based on data that would be entered at the time the patient comes in um, so that they could move ahead with something and then bring in more of a behavioral health piece to it, but um, at least start somewhere uh, based on something, not, not just you know, because primary care physicians give out more psychiatric medication than psychiatrists. Yep. Yeah, and, and so uh, and we're actually finding in Pennsylvania with the um, student assistance uh, provider programs, you know, SAP agencies that mm -hmm. the state of Pennsylvania contracts to to take care of students with uh, behavioral health issues. They've told us they're saving 30 to 45 minutes of staff time in using VH yeah. works for their initial assessment. And, no, I and, believe you know, it. In yeah. School. And so the next step, which we're working on, I think I told Chris, and we have a separate project uh, that NIDA is supporting to understand the business processes around medication treatment for opioid addiction, you know, mm -hmm. with buprenorphine and methadone being the two main ones. So we're mm -hmm. in the middle of doing that. And then I, I learned, uh, well, I thought more about the problem when you have a pregnant woman who's got an opioid addiction and you know treating them is important but then what happens after when the baby's born is there's no that my current knowledge is no standard approach to whether or not child protective services takes the baby away or not and they tend to take the infant away from the mom a lot which is generally not a good thing so that's a place where we wanted to apply some yeah. artificial intelligence around well, yeah, how you get yeah, some yeah, on the yeah. policies and, and yeah. how you follow policies and rules. Yeah, usually what happens is if the mother's clean at the time of birth, um, they don't take the baby away, um, at least in Michigan. And they provide a lot of supports around mom and the right. baby. If mom has just been using drugs within the last 30 days or whatever it may be, the baby is put into foster care. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not as if mom will never, you know, if mom wants to clean up and, um, you know, start doing what she needs to do, then yes, the baby's going to come back to her. Um, but that all depends on a lot of stuff. But that's not the way it is all over the country. Uh, in some places, the baby's, you know, taken away. It's really hard to sever parental rights these days. Well, it sounds like Michigan is actually, a, a, you know, doing a pretty good job, but it is quite variable around the country. So that's mm -hmm. an example of really just the kind of um, computational semantic um, artificial, you know, thinking. Right. That actually, I started working on with when I started the company it is, I think, pertinent to that because it's a way to actually automate kind of processing uh, decisions over the policy, the actual sentences and statements and policy documents. Okay. That's great. And, you know, Kristen, I, I think, quickly saw the potential match. Um, yep. I do want to uh, make sure that your expectations are on track, Dave. So, you know, our current BHWorks products that are used in, you know, 10 or more states, we don't have into production use those advanced, you know, kind of computational semantic AI capabilities. We have that technology is available to uh, use to create product functions, okay. but it's not at that state right now. So, and that's something no, that, that's been that, for That's 20 all years. right. I mean, we're we're in the process of developing it, and uh, that's one of Darren's expertise. He's, he's like a 
walking expert on AI. Yes. Um, and we're already in the process of doing it. Um, so I think we could find a, you know, we could find a way to work together um, and really come up, I think, with a really neat piece here. Um, so yeah. have Kristen, Chris, I know Kristen will send me the information and we'll get connected. Yep, exactly. Please. And <laughs> as we close for today, which this was a definitely a very different show, but you know what? The, the interesting thing about mental health businesses, counselors, you know, the, the lay staff, so counselors, um, psychiatrists, uh, anyone, you know, working in that kind of a mental health organization or any kind of a mental health organization don't get to see what goes on when it comes to technology. And so there's always this kind of fight this is where I would come in and I'd be, I, you remember, um, Dave, I, when I worked with IBHN, which is a multi mm -hmm. behavioral health network, they would call me the EHR doctor. And it wasn't because I'm a doctor. It was because <laughs> I could communicate with the AI artificial intelligence experts and the, you know, the, um, data experts, I could communicate with them. And then I can also communicate with, um, someone who's not a technologist and somehow, be a conduit so that they don't kill each other, misunderstand each other, all of those things. And this yeah. is, a, and find organizations that actually care. I mean, mental health is my life. This is the work that I do. I was never going to introduce an organization to a horrible electronic healthcare record uh, with, I mean, knowingly anyway, I've introduced some that I found out later were awful. But um, so when I run into organizations, obviously I've worked with Next Step Solutions for ever. And then I met you, Dr. Tien, and I went, oh my gosh, another person that cares. We need people that care working on the behind the scenes of running mental health organizations, because where does that trickle to? It trickles to patient care. And that's what I'm about. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I did this show this way was because I, I you know, I want people that we have a lot of counselors that are listening to the show a lot of different people, even even patients, just just patients, to hear the bigger world that goes on in healthcare, um, to see what everybody's creating, so that you can have wider eyes about ah, oh, this is all what goes into my healthcare. This is all what goes into my mental health care. These kinds of conversations. So I hope you two were okay with that. <laughs> no, that's fine. And um, yeah, please send me the info, Kristen. I will, Dave. Yeah, I know much you more than. Much more than okay, Kristen. It's, it's really good. And um, uh, one concept that we have articulated, uh, which is about what you're doing, actually, is we call relational network optimization or RNO. It's all about you know connecting people together more effectively. And um, we're also working with NAMI Maryland in terms of helping directly you know work with uh, individuals uh, and using our tools. You know, so there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, and I guess right. I, I you know, so I can say to folks that listen, um, you can also find out more about myself um, on LinkedIn. I'm just uh, Alan Tien at LinkedIn, A L L E N T I E N. And also, I one of the things that I said I, I uh, push out on Twitter. So it's just at Alan Tien on Twitter. Um, of course, it's limited to 280 characters and a, and a picture. But right. um, which what you talk of, about takes a lot more than 280 characters, but people can go to your website too. They can go to yeah. mdlogix.com, mdlogix.com. There's so much to talk about. We can't even give it justice in you know a 30 minute show. But but I'm so thankful that you came on. I'm glad that I could help make this connection. This is my this is probably my favorite part of what I do in the business world. Is go ah that person needs to know this person and those two companies need to do great things together for this field that I love. So this is always exciting for me. Awesome. Okay. All thank right. you, well, Kristen. Thank you both. Good talking to you, doctor. Likewise. Dave. Thank you. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in to a very interesting and unique episode of mental health business on mental health news radio. Sometimes I'm passive aggressive.
Passive, but never without good intentions. I heat up and act on my emotions. Thanks so much for listening to Mental Health News Radio. Our podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, and hundreds of other podcast apps. Or you can visit our website at mentalhealthnewsradio.com. If you have a question or would like to be a guest, become a podcaster on our network, or join the amazing organizations that help keep us on the air, please email us at info at mhnrnetwork.com. Get ready for that special goodbye from our resident therapy dog, Miles, and a special thanks to Emily Sohn for letting us use her incredible song, Cordial, for our podcast music. Listen to the full song on SoundCloud at emily.sonne. Don't be surprised when I don't hate on you. After all we promised, we'd be cordial. Sometimes in you I can fight it. Good boy.